good evening all of you welcome back to trinod chemistry classes this channel is meant for the chemistry here i am going to discuss regarding second year chemistry topic solutions this is my fifth video in this topic a solution fifth video this is the part 5 uh, please subscribe my channel to get notifications in part 1 we have discussed what is a solution various types of solutions and uh, concentration determination methods various various concentration determination methods were discussed in part 2 i have continued the determination of concentration of a solution continued and uh, in that uh, we have solved some numericals also how to find molarity molality mole fraction or uh, like this we have solved some numericals in part 3 so in third video i have discussed about solid and liquid type of solutions in that uh, we have discussed about qualitative properties we have seen what are qualitative properties what is its application in that uh, i have uh, discussed that there are four qualitative properties in that one of the first qualitative properties relative lowering of vapor pressure was discussed in my fourth video i have continued the qualitative properties another two qualitative properties that is elevation in boiling point and uh, depression in freezing point were discussed in this video we are going to discuss about uh, osmotic pressure right before going to this osmotic pressure uh, first we need to know what is the definition generally we have seen this word is uh, in first year uh, states of matter first year chemistry states of matter topic that is the law the grams law of diffusion in that what we discuss what is the law of diffusion the movement of gas molecules from one place to another place one place to another place we are calling it as the diffusion generally we think that diffusion phenomena is applicable only for the gas molecules but this diffusion phenomena can also be applicable for the solutions here the what is the diffusion in case of solutions means uh, that is movement of solvent molecules uh, from solute to solvent and uh, solute molecules from solute to solvent movement of solvent molecules from solute to solvent and uh, solute molecules are from sol solute to solvent here let me explain the diffusion phenomena with an example that uh, generally in our daily we are using let us take an example let us take a bucket of water then you drop or so you just leave one drop of robin blue in that you know we are aware that that is liquid robin blue you drop one uh, you one drop of robin blue in that and don't uh, mix the solution immediately leave it for some time initially we can observe that the drop falls to the bottom of the solution bottom of the bucket but with the time increases what is happening is the drop with the blue coloration starts increasing from the bottom of the bucket initially for only for the few layers then after half of the bucket after some time complete the bucket is in blue color so what is happening here here is the diffusion is happening that movement of solvent molecules from solvent to robin blue robin blue molecules these are solute particles that are moving from robin blue to solvent water so diffusion phenomena can be applicable for the solutions also here we need to know what is a semi permeable member the semi permeable membrane is a membrane which allows the passage of solvent molecules but not solute molecules the solute semi permeable membrane is a membrane which allows the passage of solvent molecules but not solute molecules it's like uh, sieves you see in our daily life we are using sieves various levels of sieves you see the sieves are we have by allowing passing only uh, certain kinds of molecules only. here also semi permeable membrane which allows the passage of solvent molecules as this size is very 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 small when compared to solute particles the the next concept here is before going to the osmotic pressure we need to know what is osmosis osmosis is nothing but the movement of uh, solvent molecules from 
solvent to solution or low concentrated solution to high concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane osmosis is the phenomena in which movement of solvent molecules from solvent to solution or low concentrated solution to high concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane what is osmosis when movement of solvent molecules from low concentrated solution to high concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane we are calling it as the osmosis this osmosis is a spontaneous phenomena osmosis is a spontaneous phenomena if we mix um, if we separate two concentrated two different concentration solutions with a semi permeable membrane what will happen is solvent molecules are flowing from low concentrated solution to high concentrated solution through the semi permeable membrane up to what time until the concentrations of the solutions becomes equal until that the movement can be will be continuing you see this osmosis phenomena we can observe in our daily life you see while making mango pickle no you see or to get to, uh, to remove water from the mango what we will mix with water because outside is higher concentration and outside is lower concentration that's why water comes out easily the next concept is now let us go back to our actual concept osmotic pressure with the osmotic pressure is the pressure needed to be applied on high concentrated solution to prevent the osmosis the pressure needed to be applied on high concentrated solution to prevent the osmosis we are calling it as the osmotic pressure you see osmosis is occurring but to stop that osmosis no if we apply some pressure on the high concentrated solution what will happen is osmosis uh, uh, stops the phenomena only we are calling it as the osmotic pressure the pressure required to prevent the osmosis or the pressure required to stop the movement of solvent molecules from low concentrated solution to high concentrated solution through semi permeable membrane required to apply on high concentrated solution that pressure we are calling it as the osmotic pressure and is denoted with the letter pi and is denoted with the letter pi next here one more word is coming reverse osmosis what is reverse osmosis when pressure excess then osmotic pressure is applied on high concentrated solution what will happen is reverse is happening initially in osmosis what is happening solvent molecules are moving from low concentrated to high concentrated but as we have applied excess pressure on high concentrated solution what is happening is the solvent molecules are moving from high concentrated to low concentrated that one we are calling it as the reverse osmosis what is reverse osmosis when pressures excess then osmotic pressure are applied on high concentrated solutions what is happening is the movement of solvent molecules are moving from solvent to the high concentrated solution to low concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane you see it is happening in reverse of osmosis you see in osmosis low to high whereas in reverse osmosis high to low this phenomena we are calling it as the reverse osmosis you see uh, this reverse osmosis technique is used while making while drinking water if you take some uh, uh, branded water bottles rvo water rvo water means that is a reverse osmosis technique where you uh, purified the water you see we can see on the bottles uh, water bottles branded water bottles rvo uv ozonized water rvo means here reverse osmosis technique was used to purify the water how to determine the molar mass of a uh, unknown substance by using this colligator property in according to van der hoff's theory of dilute solutions according to van der hoff's theory of uh, dilute solutions what is the, the van der hoff theory is telling you you see this is the pure solvent we can see this is the pure solvent in dilute solution in dilute solution the solute what is the dilute and concentrated if solute is more that is called concentrated if solute is very very less that's the, the solution we are calling it as the dilute solution you see in dilute solution the solute particles are far apart far apart between the two solute particles there are huge number of solvent particles solvent molecules are there suppose i am removing all the solvent molecules just i am keeping the uh, solution like that i am removing then what is happening this blue 
stars are all are solute particles you see uh, the solute particles are far away from each other from this what vanderhoff theory of dilute solution is saying that the, the solute particle in its dilute solution behaves like a gas as in dilute solution the solute particles are far away from each other we know that uh, uh, differences between gas and liquid and so gas liquid and solid solids are very 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 molecules are very close to each other in gases they are far away from each other that's why what this vanderhoff theory is telling is the solute particles in a dilute solution behaves like a gas what he was telling is uh, as it is behaving like a gas gas loss whatever whatever uh, were whatever discussed in your first year chemistry states of matter that is boyle's law charles law avogadro's law can be applicable can be applicable for this uh, dilute solutions based on this he proposed van't hoff proposed three laws one is van't hoff boyle's law van't hoff charles law van't hoff avogadro's law right the, uh, this uh, van't hoff theory of dilute solution the solution behaves like a gas that's why gas laws can be applicable according to this van't hoff boyle's law osmotic pressure of a dilute solution osmotic pressure of a dilute solution is inversely proportional to its uh, volume inversely proportional to its uh, volume that is phi is proportional to 1 by e similarly from van't hoff charles law osmotic pressure is inversely proportional directly proportional to the absolute temperature uh, directly proportional to the absolute temperature phi is proportional to c let it be true similarly from van't hoff avogadro's law uh, equal number of uh, the the osmotic pressures are directly proportional to number of moles here that is the equation from this 1 2 and 3 we can say that phi is proportional to nt by v if we remove the proportionality i am placing some constant yes that phi is equal to nst by v phi v is equal to nst here yes is called solution constant and it has the same values as that of gas constant r whatever 0.0821 liter atmosphere mole kelvin or 8.314 joule mole kelvin like that whatever r has values s has also a same values if we take v to this side phi is equal to nb by st nb by n by v into st here n by v we are calling it as the concentration that is in molarity we know that molarity is nothing but number of moles of solute present in one liter of solution number of moles by volume of solution in liters that's why that is denoted with concentration c so we can simply say that phi is equal to cst now how to determine the molar mass we know that phi is equal to n by v into st in place of that phi v is equal to w by n plus n in place of n what we can write is weight by gram molecular weight w by m into st you see here s is the constant at constant temperature if we know how much solute we have added and how much what is the volume of the solution and phi is an experimental quantity from the if we then this unknown parameter is m that's why we can determine the molar mass of the unknown solute this is how molar mass of uh, unknown solute can be determined from this osmotic pressure now another concept is we are moving to a next concept uh, that is abnormal qualitative properties and van't hoff factor you see for solutes uh, which neither associate nor dissociate observed qualitative properties same as that of observed qualitative properties are same as that of the calculated values what it mean observed means experimentally determined values calculated means theoretically predicted qualitative property values whether it may be a relative lowering of vapor pressure or osmotic pressure elevation in boiling point or depression in freezing point whatever it may be uh, if solute is neither associating nor dissociating for example electrolytes non electrolytes as neither associates nor dissociates whereas electrolytes associates or dissociate for example nucl it is dissociating magnesium chloride it is also dissociating if you take acetic acid in benzene it is associating if you take glucose it is non electrolyte it neither associates nor dissociates or urea it is also non electrolyte see if solute if solute is non electrolyte it neither associates nor dissociates in that case observed qualitative properties are same as the top calculated or theoretically predicted values
but its solute is either associates or dissociates observed qualitative properties are not equal either they have higher than that of the calculated values or lower than that of the calculated values these qualitative properties if solute is either associating nor dissociating then that time we are calling it them as the abnormal qualitative properties to express these abnormal qualitative properties van der hoff introduced one factor that one we are calling it as the van der hoff factor van der hoff factor is the ratio between observed qualitative property to the calculated qualitative property observed qualitative property to the calculated qualitative property or by experimentally determined qualitative property to the calculated theoretically predicted qualitative property for non electrolytes that is such as glucose urea or sucrose fructose like this if you take non electrolytes for them van der hoff factor is always one because observed value and the calculated value both are same but whereas for electrolytes which are dissociating van der hoff factor is equal to the number of ions produced for example if you take nacl it is giving two ions that's why van der hoff factor is 2 if you take magnesium chloride its van der hoff factor is 3 as it is giving three ions one magnesium ion and two chloride ions right if solute is associating van der hoff factor is 1 by n how many molecules are combining and forming a single molecule associating and forming a single molecule for example acetic acid in benzene exists as a dimer that's why van der hoff factor acetic acid in benzene is 1 by 2 here the van der hoff factor is nothing but the ratio between observed qualitative property to the calculated qualitative property with this i am concluding the uh, session uh, here we have discussed about solid in liquid type of solutions in that we have seen four qualitative properties one is relative lowering of vapor pressure elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point and then osmotic pressure with this we have completed our solid in liquid type of solution the properties associated with solid in liquid type of solutions that is uh, qualitative properties we have discussed maybe to i will continue this uh, class in the next next video uh, solutions topic maybe that one may be the, the last one an examination point of view uh, this content is very very uh, useful for iip intermediate public examination point of view uh, to get notifications please subscribe my channel thank you